Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today I wanted to do an artificial insemination video, and or AI. And usually when you hear AI, folks are talking about artificial intelligence. So when somebody emailed me and asked about this video, and I, I love it when folks do that. If you guys have any topics you'd like me to cover, please reach out and I'll make a video for you. And that's why I made this video, because at first I had never even looked into it. And then once I started researching it, it was pretty interesting. And I wanted to share some of the information that, that I found out. Now, uh, this isn't your typical backyard type of operation, but in event being that you wanted a scale, often folks uh, start with a backyard rabbitry and then they end up scaling up to a real big production. You know, if you were in the position where you were going to do that, this is a terrific way to go about it. So once we get done with the presentation, there's going to be some more video where we need some rabbits and we're also doing some chores. So stay tuned if you want to see more content. But at the end of it, we'll put down some artificial insemination tools, some kits, as well as some videos where you can watch somebody artificially inseminate a rabbit. So thank you so much for watching today. Let's get started. Okay, so we have a lot of information to get through and I'm just going to try to unpack all of it so you can follow the table of contents and cut in wherever you want to. Uh, I'll leave timestamps in the description below. And I read some studies that were done in Africa, Brazil, and uh, it's, it's just pretty interesting. Everybody does it differently. They're weaning at different times, but I'm just going to give you the general, the general information. Now, I'm not a physician or a veterinarian, so, but this is just some information that I, I, I researched and I wanted to share it, okay? So, so let's get started. What is artificial insemination? So artificial insemination is the process of manually collecting semen from a male rabbit that we call a buck and depositing it into the reproductive tract of a female rabbit, or, or doe we call it. Now specialized tools, uh, you're going to need these uh, in order to do this, um, but why use, why even use artificial insemination? Well, genetic improvement. AI allows a breeder to select the best genetics, uh, even from, from distant or hard to access bucks. So this prevents injury, and it also helps in planning your breeding schedules, ensuring that your does get pregnant at the desired time, which is crucial for managing a large uh, productive rabbitry. So this prevents injury. We talked about how this can re reduce risk uh, when it comes to mating and, and breeding your rabbits, and especially when it comes to significant size differences. So let's talk about some of the tools you'll need. There's AI kits that you can purchase on Amazon, and they're just collection, semen collection devices. Um, now, it usually involves an artificial vulva, um, uh, syringes, plastic syringes, straws, a gun, and this is all used to transfer the semen to the, the female rabbit. And you'll use things like a nasal spec speculum because this is, it's so small, you're talking about a very small rabbit, so a nasal speculum is actually the tool that you'll use for your rabbit. So let's talk about the step-by-step -step process. We talked about using an artificial uh, vulva. You want to properly stimulate the buck and that's just simply by using a doe. I was surprised to read that when you stimulate the doe uh, to induce the ovulation, it, to bring the buck to the doe's cage, which we all know traditionally is a no-no. So, you know, reading further into the study, uh, they did bring up that you can use a neutral cage, so the, the doe will be less territorial. Um, so I, I personally would recommend using a neutral cage to keep the, the buck from, from getting injured during this process. So what you'll do is you'll introduce the buck to the doe. The buck will try to mount the doe. Now what you're going to do, just like sl slipping your hand underneath the belly of the doe during pal palpating a doe, you're going to do the same thing with the artificial vulva and you're going to let the buck access it and he'll make his deposit. You're just going to slide it right underneath the doe so the buck can get to it. And by using a plastic syringe and placing a sample on a microscope slide, you can use the microscope to inspect all the candidates and find who the best candidate is for your dose. So preparing your dough for this insemination, of course you want to do a physical inspection. Make sure that your rabbit is healthy with no issues. Make sure that she's at least six months. She's not overweight. She's not underweight. She's not battling any issues, but most importantly, she is, the, the estrus cycle is correct. You want to make sure that her vent is swollen red and, or a purple. 
and she's she's ready for insemination. Now it's important to keep your doe calm. If you can, recruit a helper to help hold your rabbit, but you want to make sure that this this AI gun, you can uh, insert the straw to, to make it all the way back to the cervix. Now, you, how far do you insert it? We're talking three to four inches or eight to 10 centimeters. With the head slightly elevated or uh, with the rear end slightly elevated, you insert the AI straw and deposit the semen. You wanna insert it far enough where it's reaching the cervix. And one application is 0.2 milliliters. Squeezing it twice is a sufficient application for one rabbit, no more than 0.5 milliliters per insemination. Now the success rate of a backyard rabbitry for AI is about 50% to 70% and that's because this, they're just it takes practice. There's a lack of experience and it takes a while to get better at this and using your equipment and you know there's a cost to all this equipment so it depends on what you're going to use and how much of it you're going to use but it's important to keep the temperature at a controlled temp because that's one of the biggest mistakes. Also there's hormones that often veterinarians use to induce ovulation and you need a medical license to get these hormones. And these hormones are HCG, which stands for human chorionic gonadotropin and GNRH, which stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. These hormones are used to induce ovulation, but the downside is over time, these rabbits can actually grow antibodies to combat this. So, but the good news is we know how to induce ovulation. As backyard rabbitries, we know that you can use a teaser buck and letting the buck mount the doe, you can place a buck temporarily near the rabbit's cage also for a day or two to, to help induce ovulation. But you later wanna remove the buck because the buck is gonna to continue to mark the doe and spray. So how can you ensure that the semen remains viable during this process? Well, after checking the male rabbit's mobility and you have a good stud to work with, there's a semen extender where you can take one sample and add the extender and you can impregnate five or more rabbits with one sample. You can keep the semen at a controlled 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or a 37 degrees Celsius using an incubator. And I found one for right around $39. I'll link it down below. You can either use the semen right away or you can keep your samples in a 40 degree Fahrenheit refrigerator. You can warm, uh, you can warm them as soon as you're ready. You can keep them up to seven days, but once you're ready to use them, you are gonna to wanna to rewarm them in the incubator back up to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit before using your samples. Okay, so let's go over the tips for success. So first and foremost, you gotta make sure your rabbits are healthy and they're, they're not battling any issues. Um, you wanna make sure that they're right in the middle of their estrus cycle. Uh, you wanna make sure you're inspecting that vulva and you introduce uh, this rabbit or you, you do the artificial insemination at the right time. That's most important. You also want to try your best to induce ovulation. That's a big challenge. You know, always use fresh and properly stored semen. Avoid extreme temperatures. That's one of the biggest challenges as well. Now, of course, when you're doing this, you want to maintain the most sterile environment you possibly can. You know, use surgical gloves. Make sure everything's as clean as possible. And you know, I wish you the best of luck. This is very interesting and the biggest benefit from this was how you can take one sample and impregnate several does and all on the same day. But thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be sure to get back to everybody. And stay tuned. We're going to be uploading a podcast uh, covering all this information so you can listen to this while you work. Um, our sale is going for the rest of the year. We're doing our fallback sale. So if you guys are interested in starting a rabbitry um, or if you run a rabbitry for a while and you're having trouble um, turning a profit, we can show you what your rabbitry is missing and how you can finally start uh, profiting from your backyard passion. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You ruby dyed white. And let's see, let's see what we got. Where's my marker? We have a buck. Oh wait, oh, that's a doe, I think. No, oh, it's a buck. Uh, I'll show you some really cool rabbits here. Now, not everybody, not everybody likes these. You know, your typical red-eyed whites, okay, the, the, the ruby-eyed white, rather. Um, 
This is actually probably the most farmed rabbit. Most, oh, hold on. We took the demon out. That's what I should title this video. Breeding the demon out. Isn't that blue? Yes. Pretty. But we don't have any sun today. So, can't really see it. <clears throat> Let's see what this guy is. Come on, doe. Mosquito. Mosquitoes on the rabbit's ears. Come on, doe. It is a doe. All right. So we'll take the left ear. We do the same thing. We've been doing it for years and years and years. We just temporarily mark our rabbits in the left ear. Uh, just force a habit because you always want to tattoo your left ear. Leave the right ear open for the ARBA. Got another blue eye white. Oh, we got a buck. We got a buck. So then what we do for bucks is we write a two. That's what we do for... That's what we do for bucks. Two for guys, one for gals. And one way to get all your weaning done and your uh, sexing of the rabbits in one day is you basically can just move the does and the mama out to a smaller cage, or depending on how big the litter is, you can leave a couple bucks with the mama. I would put the smaller amount, that's a buck, I'd put the smaller amount in with mama. You don't have to worry about the bucks trying to breed with mama for at least a couple weeks. Okay, bucks. But we'll see what we got. You know, in most cases, unfortunately, there's not enough does. You always want more does. Okay. Okay. So, this is another ruby-eyed white, red-eyed white. Another buck. 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 Mosquito on her eye. His eye. Okay, you got something in your left ear? Yep. So then you basically just keep, you know, looking, going through your rabbits until you get all the rabbits that have, until they all have tattoos, temporary tattoos. And this marker will last about two weeks. Maybe a little less. Buck. A lot of mosquitoes out today. You know, it, it's supposed to be a two, but sometimes it comes out like a, like a ribbon. Get this one. Okay, another blue eyed. Let's see what we got. Go. Doe. Little guy.
Fuck. He's so small it was tough to see. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> 